Welcome to the uprising. These ruins were abandoned when Persephone constructed her paradise. We won't be bothered here. But there are so few of you. Well, thanks to you, I now have a warhorse. An invincible warhorse. Or so I'm told. I'm not sure how much help one horse is going to be. Most of Persephone's army consists of mind-controlled humans. Free their minds and bring them to me. We can use them as troops. Free their minds? My dear friend Hermes is a master manipulator. And that staff of yours looks like one of his creations. Try using that. There's an outpost southwest from here, nestled in the hand of Hades. Warriors were spotted in its paw. When controlled humans from Elysium are knocked down, liberate them to remove the each control perception. Perso ah, Persephone. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, I imagine they definitely expected you to do this quest a little earlier. Uh, it also just says to do it. It doesn't actually tell me a specific place to do it. And once again, fucking hide completed is on. Uh, don't I have... This one, right? Broken Daydream? Yeah, there's some guys up there. So apparently I just need two for this. Because, <laughs> you know, I don't know how much two people are going to help, but eh, whatever. So, you know, this is one of those things, right, where I kind of wish that they had programmed in a... Because um... this, what this tells me is that there's nothing that tracks how many people you've liberated in the background. Like, there's nothing that's keeping track of it, which is a shame because, like, I've liberated so many people. Like, this rebellion should be fucking massive at this point. Like, absolutely massive. <sighs> With how many people I've liberated. Like, she should, you know, granted, I don't know exactly the rules of this place. Uh, but I feel like she should have nobody left working with her, like, or, or, or like, mind controlled under her control anyway, because, like, it's ridiculous. But anyway, let us go rescue a couple people, and then I imagine we'll get, because uh, I think what I read about it when I was looking up whether or not Liberating did anything early on, um, one thing I did read is that the, the quest that's tied also, they don't seem to be here anymore, <coughs> that the quest tied to uh, getting that one achievement is a side quest and not a main quest. So, okay, so maybe I do have to go to the Hand of Hades. I mean, there was assholes here before, but uh, we seem to be all out of those here, so. Fuck. I mean, there's gotta be. Okay, do I not have a, uh... oh, there it is. Oh, but that's across the way. And I'm in a fucking restricted area, so I can't fucking fast. Oh, I could bet you, oh, there was one. I just saw one, we're good. Because I realize it's telling me that to go there, but it also just says to liberate my controlled humans. And since I don't have an actual quest marker, I'm going to assume I don't actually have to go there. And I'm going to try this one because the compound is right there. And that's right there. I also looked at the uh, the bracers that I got for the other quest. And it goes with the uh, waistband or pants. Like, I don't know. It's not pants. None of our pants because they don't have legs. But anyway... The waistband. I guess they're waistbands. Uh, that I got just off of a random guy. They're part of the same set. It was very weird when I got that too. Because like I was just doing the, like clearing the areas. And I took out... I, can't remember, I, th I don't remember if it was a statue or just like a regular enemy. But either way, <laughs> I got an actual like set piece. And I was like the fuck because i don't think during the entirety of the uh the main game did i ever get oh where the fuck was it now it's over there right it's hey, yeah just right there uh i don't think i ever actually got the uh got any legendary What's equipment uh let alone a set like i don't think i got a legendary weapon let alone a set piece Okay, so there's a guy. There's a guy. There's some more guys. There we go. That's better. 
Don't know where everyone went in that other place. It's very weird. Alright. So we'll go, we'll knock this guy out. Since we only require two. Let's see, will a headshot even do it? With this? Without my hunter gear? No. Uh... So I kind of want to assassinate this guy, but... Because if I hit him and it doesn't knock him out, I'm fucked. Because it's definitely going to activate the statue. Because he's way too close to it for it to not. Oh, whoops. But, uh... I feel like if I drop down onto the statue, he's 100% going to see me. Oh. Unless he leaves. <clears throat> There we go. Oh, ran right through the grass. <coughs> I remember this place because I remember that, like this section over here specifically. Because, you know, that happened last time, but that's fine. So I hide in there. That guy turns around and I've got my first guy to liberate. Well, you know, I've got, like, my 70th guy to liberate, but, you know, whatever. Wake him up. Go, that's one. Over there. I only need one more, and if I can get a little guy instead of a big guy, that would be better. Because at least with the little guys, I know for... I know that they're being knocked out. Ah, well. Hey, it worked. Nice. I also picked, I used my ability point because uh, underneath assassination, they had, because I, I got all my assassin damage up, but I missed another one, which was uh, while at full health, your damage goes up. So, oh wait, don't know what the fuck I'm doing that for. I gotta get out of here before I can fast travel. Um, which I'm assuming, like it has the all damage sign next to it and it doesn't specify damage, so. Uh, the thing about those is, like, I don't know, like, stuff that increases your assassination shit. Uh, I don't know if that shows on your, uh, like, when you're standing behind a guy. Because it seems to be, like, no matter how much of a boost I give my assassination damage through skills, it doesn't seem to actually change how much of the health bar is going away on these bigger guys. It almost seems like the bigger guys can't or aren't supposed to be able to be one-shotted. Like it's programmed in that they have to have a little, like that little bit of health left unless you get a critical, obviously. So either that's the case or, and I would say that this next part is probably not true based on what I've experienced, but, um, it's applied after you hit the button. But the reason I don't think that's true is because I, there's still times where I hit a big guy and he doesn't get knocked out. You surprise me. When we first met, I was positive you were sent by Persephone to... To what? Seduce me. Confuse me. Anything to make me forget my love. But when I asked you to weaken Persephone's influence, you did. I asked you to bring me warriors, and here they are. And all I had to do was risk my life for you to trust me. No one in Elysium is who they say. So when a clever warrior shows up to help me escape, you'll have to excuse me if I'm skeptical. <clears throat> Time to find more warriors. Scout spotted one nearby. Was a Spartan hero in his former life. He's not under Persephone's influence but keeps mostly to himself. With a champion like him on our side, we can't fail. How will I know when I find him? From what I'm told, you can't miss him. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we'll just continue with the main quest for the moment. Uh, and I will do that in between parts. In between this part and next part. I'm guessing that this part... Uh, okay, well, let's, I'll have to head for that. 
Oh, so the blood one. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to guess that we're not finishing this, this part. I obviously don't know that. But just based on the last couple parts and like the quest chain that Hermes gave me and the quest chain that Hakata gave me, I'm going to assume that Adonis's quest chain is about the same length. And uh, unless, uh, of course, they count that little side quest as part of the main quest, in which case it might be shorter. But either way, uh, I have a feeling... I'm guessing that you'll know once you're heading into the last thing. Like, I'm assuming you're not just going to be thrown into it and be like, haha, you're in the final battle now. You have failed your achievement because you didn't do this thing immediately upon getting it. Well, that would suck. Uh, it would especially suck considering all the time and effort that I put into fucking freeing, or like liberating all those fucking soldiers and that as I've been playing and freeing the different areas and that, like, like, it would have been nice to have something tracking that in the background. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's it. I, I don't have anything to like, like, I don't have a, I can see why they didn't or anything. Like, there's no, no real reason. Like, if they have a quest that tracks you liberating people in the areas, that means that they already have the system in place that can track that. And they could have done it so, like, you know, it made a difference in some way. Like, they could have made it so, like, once you get that quest, he can just be like, man, you've been liberating the crap out of people. Except, you know, more ancient Grecian. Uh, I have a feeling I know who this is. I don't know 100%, but the fact that he didn't say a name, uh, I have two guesses, I would say, about who it is. Uh, based on the fact that, you know, my entire family survived and this is the House of the Bloodline. Let's see. <sighs> Hey, it is too. Leonidas. You have the eyes of my daughter. Granddaughter, actually. So something did survive that day. How do you have this? Mirini. She's my mother. I'm here because I need your help. I need you to fight. I have found peace here. Why would I fight? All my life, I was told of my grandfather. The king who spat in the face of the gods and ran his spear through anyone who threatened the freedom of his people. Now I'm the one fighting for freedom, and I'm asking my grandfather for help. We'll need to use the terrain to our advantage. So you'll fight with us? Not until you fight me. You say you're Marini's daughter. I want to see how she trained you. All right. Oh my. All right. That's a well. little bit more help. Oh, no, never mind. Will only fight for you if you are willing to die for them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was so perfect that I countered his kick with another kick. Come on, old man. You can do better than that, can't you? Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, this is mean, isn't it? See, can I take his shield? I could have used you at Thermopylae. You could have used a lot of people at Thermopylae. I am glad this spear is in your hands. I will fight with you. You have my word as a Spartan. Thank you, Grandfather. Oh, the Asphodel hammer. In the face of the gods. Remember who you are. Really? I, I remember reading that, and I remember seeing Remember Who You Are, but like... 
that doesn't seem to fit, right? Like, there's not really anything... I don't know, it... it remember who you are, but he, ne he knew who he was. I feel like they missed, like... I feel like they misnamed that, or misdescribed that achievement. Remember who you are, like, I... Because I remember reading that achievement, and I'm like, that's weird. Like, Cassandra must lose her memory or something. Or, you know, she must help somebody else with their memory or something. But there was no memory issues there. I mean, every, like... Maybe if I'd went with the we are outnumbered one, maybe it would have made a bit more sense. But it would be weird if they made, or if they wrote a description for achievement that only made sense uh, if you went down a certain conversation tree, right? Like, that would be weird. Ah, well, whatever. Fucking got Leonidas back. My other guess, by the way, was uh, Brasidas. Uh, it was called the House of the Bloodline, so I assumed it was Leonidas, but the fact that they said Spartan Warrior, uh, you know, uh, I kind of thought it might have been Brasidas, but... How is Leonidas fitting in? Morale's never been higher. Scouts are reporting Persephone's influence is weakening across Elysium. You're definitely causing havoc out there. I won't rest until it's done. You know, I'm starting to think Elysium isn't such a bad place with you in it. Yes, if only you weren't in love with Aphrodite, and trying to overthrow the Queen, and uh, everyone else wasn't dead, Elysium would be perfect. All I'm saying is you breathe life into this world filled with dead people. Anyhow, we have a bit of a situation. Of course we do. Persephone's guards have cut off supply lines, overtaken hideouts, secrets in locations she couldn't possibly have known without inside help. We suspect there is a spy in our midst. Who? One is a messenger. She was sent with crucial information to one of our camps. When she didn't return, we sent a scout. The entire camp was killed, and she was nowhere to be found. The other is a blacksmith. Soldiers love to gossip while getting their blade sharpened. We think he may have overheard some of our plans. That's a good start. They both have homes in the village. Return to me once you're done. Ow. All right, well, I mean, neither of those uh, seem very, you know, well, it's not that they don't seem likely. I haven't yeah. met them, but like, I mean, me, like none of that evidence seems very, like I, hell, I'd say that's even weaker than circumstantial evidence. At this point. Well, I mean, there's a dead guy. Oh, never mind. He's sleeping. All right. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know whose house this is, but there's a dead guy out back, so that doesn't bode well. But no, we're good. He's alive. Detailed information about one of Adonis's rebel camps. Uh, keepers who've discovered one of the rebel camps is a destroyed temple nestled between uh, Iapetos's ruins and Adonis's gardens. Meet us there, and we will surround and overwhelm these Malacca's straws. Okay. This is the messenger's house. Well, that's not a good start for the messenger. Knows we've recruited Leonidas. Uh, my queen, our suspicions were confirmed. The fallen king of Sparta has joined the delinquents in their cause. As always, our forces are ready to serve you, but perhaps you know the perfect person to deal with this king of headaches. Always at your loyal service, Caprice. Well, I have a feeling it might very well be the messenger now, don't you? Broken piece from one of the torches of Hypnos I destroyed. Okay. Well, I mean... That's neither here nor there, but, you know, the other two letters are kind of like, man, is it ever the messenger? Like, if they want this to be like, a, oh, I don't know which one it is, they really got to give this blacksmith something. Blacksmith. A note written to Aphrodite. My beautiful Aphrodite. The blacksmith told her everything. Hathonis' escape plans, the rebellion. Uh, everything is going according to plan, my love. We've amassed significant for society up with this is ruins, and I've acquired something that will... Be devastating to Persephone's colossi. Soon the queen will be tossed from her throne and I will be in your arms. Until then, know that I miss you with all my heart. It will take more than all the gods of the underworld to keep us apart. Adonis. Wait. Oh, it's a letter from Aphrodite. Or from Adonis to Aphrodite. Gotcha. I was confused there for a second. Okay, well that's weird, but it's not incriminating for, a, you know. Hmm. A list of people Adonis has spent time with. Mine and Persephone's names are on this. Well, okay, if I had to choose, I'm going with the messenger. 
I mean, the blacksmith seems weird, but for all I know, he's in love with Adonis. So, that would be, honestly, that would be my guess. He's in love with Adonis and the messenger is the spy. I mean... Because, <laughs> like, yeah, the blacksmith stuff was weird, but the spy stuff was like... Or the messenger stuff was like, I am a spy. Both have been spying on you. Both have information that could undo your rebellion. Lousy malakas. My scouts tell me they're on the move. We only have time to dispose of one before they disappear completely. Which is more dangerous to our cause? The blacksmith had a list of people you've spent time with, and a note to Aphrodite outlining your plans for escape. And what about the messenger? She had detailed information about one of your rebel camps, a note to Persephone about Leonidas joining the fight, and a fragment of one of the mind control devices I destroyed. The messenger needs to be stopped. Last I heard, she was spotted at a small rebel camp. I mean, once again, it seems like... <laughs> I feel like they didn't make that choice very hard. Like, I, I honestly cannot think of, like, a train of thought that would lead someone to think blacksmith over messenger for this. Like... Like I said, the, the blacksmith stuff was weird, and I could see it leading to him being a spy if he wasn't up against the messenger that literally had written to the person we're trying to overthrow about our plans to overthrow her. Like, <laughs> like uh, to be fair, they could both very well be spies. They could, they could be both of them. But if it's not both of them, it is 100% the messenger. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I don't I don't actually want to be here. Like, 100%. Uh, if it turns out to be the blacksmith, oh, fucking Christ, I will be... I will be shocked beyond belief if it turns out to be the blacksmith. Because, like, they stacked it so much. If, if it's the blacksmith, I'm going to call bullshit. Like, there's absolutely no way. I don't, you're not going anywhere. Oh. You okay, well, I need to kill you. So I'll do that. Because you need to die. Ah, oh, fuck, and that guy killed that one. And I'm out of knockout arrows, of course, because why wouldn't I be? <sighs> hang on. Get back to my, uh, hang on. <coughs> oh, it's because I'm in, the... why can't I craft my arrows? Because I was in the middle of an animation or some shit? Who cares? I'm stopping in the middle of, I can stop in the middle of the fight and change my fucking armor. I'm sure crafting arrows isn't that big of a stretch. Oh my, there's a lot of guys here. Who the hell did that? Is there another guy around here? Doesn't seem like it. Yeah. Oh, missed. Oh. Oh, long. Fucking circles, man. There we go, got another one. I wouldn't do this except for the fact that it'll uh, help me get my uh, other quest done. Otherwise, I... Oh, fuck. 
Ow. There's another one. Okay, I got one left. Do I not? Are you sure? Okay. Yeah, archer fight. Oh, fuck, we both suck. There we go. Go, oh, this should make a good dent. Oh, of course, there's somebody here. Come on now, who's here? Oh, seriously though, who? No one, all right. Okay, that's a dead guy. You should be alive. Who the hell keeps doing that? Is it because like, I'm, I don't know, because I'm like, I guess when I liberate these people, they do wake up for a second. I don't know. I'm assuming so, because the voices are changing, it seems, depending on, like, the person I'm liberating, so. That guy. I mean, I'm going to have, what, six here? So I only need two more in this region, so that's good. Assuming this counts, I'm just... I'm going to check here. Let's see, this is counting, right? I'm not just wasting my time here. Yeah, good. Four out of eight. Perfect. Okay, let's get you out of the water before you drown. Okay, got that guy. Get you. The twin-bladed battle axe. I wonder if that's a Isu weapon or not. Alright. There we go. That's that. Are we really, like, right next to where he is? Oh, my God. Still be faster for me at fast travel, sadly enough, because I'd either have to uh, climb the entire cliff, which would obviously be a while, or I would have to... Uh, can you reset your ability points at any time from the ability menu? It only cost you a bit of drag. Oh, you know, I might do that in between as well, because I kind of want to change my... Uh, my one where I call my lieutenants from the ship to fight for me because it's barely worthless and change it into that one that I uh that I have the upgrade for that gives me the spear of Leonidas and uses assassin damage because that would be way better other than that I don't know I might change some of my other like my warrior abilities just to uh just Can because I, I have a couple that are upgraded but the camp was ambushed. I did what I could. Any news on the blacksmith? He escaped. If he reports back to Persephone, many lives are in danger. Our next move needs to be swift and deadly. Meet me later at the palace of the Colossi. I've acquired a little something that will turn Persephone's paradise upside down. Are you gonna give me something that will, uh, unlock the, or that'll, like, I can conquer the Colossi or something? Keeper, there you are. The queen is in Defcalion's heritage and requires your presence. She says it's quite urgent. Okay. What is this quest? A lie, a life for a life, eh? Uh, listening ear. She summoned Cassandra to complete a seemingly impossible task with an ultimatum, eh? All right. Uh, should I take a quick break and do this then? I mean, this won't be. Nah. Oh, wait a minute. Let me see that. Uh, go back to my quest. No, Dominance is Bliss. Or was it? Oh, there we go. There's two more. Okay, so I have two more quests after this. Well, okay, so... Yeah, I must, right? Dominance is Bliss. Uh, a life for a life, give him Hades and a growing perception. I would have to assume that give him Hades is going to be the final quest. And I kind of want to end this one. You know what? We'll go and do this. We will. We, I, I know I said I wasn't going to, but I'm going to because I, uh, I want to make sure that I get it done beforehand. 
And according to that, I've only got a couple quests left. So I'd much rather just do this and then do the next quest and then we can finish off the uh, this chapter of the DLC on Friday. Because if I've only got two quests left, granted that probably wouldn't show any side quests, but I also can't imagine there being too many more side quests, if any, in this DLC. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, and from this, uh, if if I cut, if you if there might be a jump cut. I mean, if there's a cut then uh, that means that, because I'll be recording the other, like the last part of this one today as well, uh, like before I get this one, this part edited. So if it does end up being longer than I would have liked it to be, oh, well, this is pretty not real. Uh, then I will just cut out this part of me doing this, but otherwise it's going to stay in. Um, so yeah, we got some time. Now uh, we can chat about some stuff, I guess, while I knock out and uh, take over people. Uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, you know, because so there's been a, oh, what the hell was I going to talk about? Oh, <laughs> uh, so Microsoft, the little bit of news that I got is uh, Microsoft, Nintendo and um, Sony have all now agreed that any games that are on their consoles that have loot boxes or loot box mechanics in them will need to show the chances of items. And, uh, uh, where, uh there's a place right there, so that's the ruins of whatever, so that should be a good place to go. Oh, wait. Um, and it'll need to be, I guess, uh, no, I guess they never said that they needed to say that they had loot box mechanics in them beforehand, before purchase or anything, but they will need to show the, uh, to show the odds of what you get out of them. And also along with this, um, Rocket League, which I don't play, is just going to remove their loot boxes entirely, which is, like, uh, good. It, um, loot boxes aren't inherently bad i will say that but they need to be done for them to work into a game well right like because the thing that always annoyed me about loot boxes is and why they're such a big deal and why companies obviously do them a lot uh is because like you know they make the companies a shit ton of money like Companies will make more money from loot boxes than they will from a game, which is why there's so many free-to-play games that have loot box-esque mechanics in them, right? Like, there's even a new Pokemon game called, coming out for the phone called Pokemon Masters. Um, that it isn't like Pokemon Go. It's it's also not like a regular Pokemon game because you don't capture Pokemon. You use sync pairs, which let you use a certain Pokemon. And all the fights are three on Three, but you're only in control of one of the three Pokemon on your team or something. I don't know. It sounds weird. I might check it out when it actually gets released. Um, where the hell was I going? Where the hell is the... Uh, I guess I'm in it. Um, I might check it out when it gets released because, you know, I like, I like me some Pokemon. And I keep looking for new games to play on my phone. But apparently it's super grindy unless you buy stuff, which is not a surprise. Um... Okay, is there seriously nobody here either? How am I supposed to conquer this place if I've already conquered it? All right. Um. Yeah, that's so weird. Uh, I guess there's, I don't know why it's a restricted area then. Sarpedon's Refuge, here we go. Let's go to this place, why not? Is there a closer, uh, let's see, is there a different, what is this one? Mausoleum, yeah, there we go. We'll go to this one. Why not? Um, but yeah, I'll check it out. But apparently it's like really grinding that. But for me, like the, the base thing of the loot boxes isn't necessarily a bad thing, whether or not it's cosmetic or progression. Like, you know, getting randomized loot would be fine if... Now, here's the if, which is what would make it 
uh, 100% fine and probably no controversy around it. Well, very little controversy around it because there's controversy around fucking everything. Um, if you couldn't get duplicates. So if it's like you buy a loot box, there's let's say 100 items that can be in the box. You get, let's just say one, let's say one. You get one roll and there's 100 items that you might get or one of 100 items you might get. If every time you got one of those hundred items, it get it got taken out of your rolls, that would be fine. So it's like, let's say there's a hundred items and you're looking for this one sword and you get uh, an ax. Let, so let's say you're looking for one sword. Let's say there's a hundred rolls. So let's say there's 10 swords in there and you're looking for a sword. You have a one in 10 chance of getting a sword, right? Uh, and then if there was a specific sword you wanted, obviously it'd be a one in a hundred, but you know, whatever. Let's say all you require is a sword. It doesn't matter what one. Um, let's say you rolled and you got a bow or an ax or anything other than a sword. You're released from the grave uh, of Ibnos. That item, whatever you got, is now removed from the loot box. And now to get your sword, you have a whatever 10 in 99 chance is of getting it of getting a sword and if you're a specific sword what in 99 chance and so on is because that way that is the only way that you could have progression style stuff in it now some well not some a lot of loot box things have been doing a thing now um can't get, oh man I hope this guy gets knocked out uh, where if you get a duplicate of something, oh my god, there's two guys there right next to each other. There's Your no way I'm getting one without waking up the other. Grip. Um, where if you where you do get duplicates, and if you get a duplicate, uh, you get some kind of currency. It you know general like in um in Overwatch you get shards or something. And then you can buy the stuff that you get out of loot boxes for shards. But like in reality, the amount of shards it needs is like to get most of that stuff to get like the better stuff, right? Like the stuff that has the lower odds costs more shards. And it's like, if you're going to go that route, I mean, if you're going to go the route route with uh, game duplicates like that, I believe everything except for event stuff is purchasable with shards in Overwatch. I'm not 100% on that. It's not a game that I play. Don't really care for it. Um, much prefer Paladins. But anyway. Um, it's like if you're going to go that route, make sure that every go do it that way and make sure that everything that comes out of the boxes is then purchasable by the currency that you get for having duplicates. It's not the best, but as long as, once again, like in Overwatch, because I will say, they, as far as loot boxes go, Overwatch seems to nail it because it's only cosmetics in there. There's nothing that can upgrade your character or anything of the sort. So, I mean, as far as like the current way loot boxes work, I got to give it to Blizzard. Overwatch is, is the, as close to ideal as you get in that scenario. Um... Once again, going by you getting duplicates. And, you know, once again, you get duplicates because if if you get duplicates, then no matter what, you don't always have the... Uh... I'm already bored. Oh, God. I woke up the claws. I was afraid of that. See, now I want to go and grab her, but I have a feeling that if I do that. They're alive. That's lucky. See, now that right there, I think to me is bullshit. Where like, yes, they were alerted, but as soon as I entered, like I don't get any time to. Uh, to get like my stab in there. Um, but other than that, like. Uh, I don't know how sieges works all that well because you don't get very many of them. Uh, 
I don't know if you can actually get characters out of the like the alpha packs that you get there. I'm not sure. I think you can get the currency out of there, not the premium currency, but the regular currency. But once again, I'm not 100% because I, I, I like that game and I play it, well, not so much anymore. But even when I was playing it a lot, you still, like, you get very few loot packs in that. But as far as I'm aware, it's all cosmetic stuff. I don't think you can actually unlock characters outside of, like, when you first start the game, you get a pack that unlocks a random operator. But outside of that, I don't think you can get other operators through the packs. You might be able to, but I don't know. I, I really don't. I haven't done any research on that. But, like... Uh, from the grasp of Ibnos. Elysium awaits you. Okay. But like in a lot of games, like uh, for example, Battlefront 2, it was all like, cause like that was the big, like I feel like that was the one that kicked everything off, right? Like when Battlefront 2 did their loot boxes, they were tied to progression. They were so randomized that no matter what classes you like to play as, you could get loot for a class that you've never touched before. Which is obviously kind of shit. And for a class-based one like that, like that would be the equivalent to um, assuming there was upgrades in Overwatch to you never playing McCree. And uh, then you never get anything from McCree. Like, and then, or like, no, you never play McCree and then like that's the upgrade that you got was for McCree and it's like fucking great. The fuck am I supposed to do with that? Or like when, um, Paladins, right? They had loot box mechanics. Like, I guess Paladins has loot boxes as well. And Paladins isn't all that great, I'm not gonna lie. Like, uh, Overwatch's loot boxes are way better than Paladins. You get them way more often. Uh, you get them for playing the game, whereas Paladins loot boxes... I, I honestly don't think you can get any of them just from playing the game. Like, they're not great. The game itself I like better than overwatch but i gotta give the loot boxes to overwatch it they they handled them way better than paladins did but once again paladins is free to play overwatch is pay um which is why probably why like blizzard didn't put as much into like monetizing their loot boxes they did like obviously they're monetized because you can buy them with real money and there's probably um and a lot of people who do like i know uh and like they did the same thing like with Heroes of the Storm, they have their their loot box style system in that there. I can't really it's been a while since I played Heroes of the Storm. I'm having actual trouble. Um But you know, once again with Heroes of the Storm, they have a similar thing. Okay, I no, no, there it is. Uh they have the similar thing where if you get a duplicate thing, you get a currency that you can use to buy other stuff. But that currency can also be in the box itself with its which is all you know, obviously kind of crap when you unlock that. Um, but yeah, like obviously the ideal loot boxes, whether or not they're tied to progression would be that you don't get duplicates ever. Uh, obviously it's hard to monetize that. Uh, you would still get people though. Cause like, especially if you did it like, um, at one point Paladins had, and I think Battlefront 2 added them eventually. They had the specific, the chest specific to a character for Paladins or to a class for uh, Battlefront 2 and even if you went that and if you went that route and you had a hundred items for that class in there and every time somebody got a roll out of the chest it took away that item uh, then that would be good and the way and you know if they monetize that there would still be those people who would be like oh I didn't get the item I wanted out of that box I'll just buy another one and try for the item I really wanted right and while that is still gambling eventually you've won like like there is an end to it right like if you roll a hundred times i don't know what you would get as a reward after you you know got everything out of a chest i don't know nobody's ever gonna fucking do it that way so i don't have to think that hard about it but uh you know like once you were out then you've won you've got everything that you could have possibly wanted because there's nothing else and uh, come on i know there's people here because i was just here not that long ago liberating cow oh because this here's where i went to liberate those two guys for that other quest right and um 
then like if you wanted to monetize it even further, you could have it where like the items themselves uh, take like get taken out once you've rolled them, but then you could have currency rolls or some other kind of items in there. Uh, but if you did it that way, you would have to give somebody more than one reward at a time. Uh, because as soon as somebody or enough people ended up getting, like if it was one roll at a time and somebody got really unlucky and got like, just like a fuck ton of currency rolls or something, like that would be like, then the controversy starts up again, right? Because it's like, they say there's a guy items in here, but where the fuck is it, right? And yeah, you know, once again, that would, that still wouldn't be ideal. But then it would still allow them to monetize it. And the fact that you couldn't get duplicate items would give them something, some kind of credibility to the general populace and the gamers and whatnot. Um, like not a whole lot because it's still a loot box. Okay, Cassandra, when you're in fucking hidden in grass and uh, you're fucking taking someone out, fucking knock them into the grass. I know that it's an animation that you own or that you can do. See, now she keeps fucking doing it too. She keeps doing the ones. God, is this chick going to raise the alarm? Or no, she went to get a weapon because her fucking dropped when I knocked her out. I'm gonna go and set a trap on that. Just because, like, I... It's twice now. It, it, that honestly never happened to me before. Every time I'm, like, in tall grass or something and I go to knock someone out, Cassandra always pulls them into the grass. She always grabs them, pulls them in, you know, goes around in front of them, punches them in and follows them in and knocks them out. I've never had her do that, let alone that many times in a row. Like, that is utterly ridiculous. Oh, nope, that wasn't going to work anyway. Um, but yeah, so like loot boxes themselves aren't bad. It's just companies, you know, like they're obviously companies, they're developers, they want profits. Uh, the price of video games hasn't really risen a lot, if at all, really, uh, for quite some time now. So, I mean, yeah, it makes sense that they need other ways to supplement their income, uh, because they're still making the same amount from games, even though games are taking longer to develop. They're requiring more people to keep up with everything, you know. It's like, I understand why developers that need different ways to, uh, to do it. But the thing is, is that developers have to realize that a lot of the people who buy their games are people who can't. Like, they can't, like, because, like, a lot of developers, Ubisoft included, like, with Assassin's Creed, there's one more or less every year. Apparently, they're taking this year off, but that's, that's fine. That's, that's saving me, like, 80 bucks, if not more, because I usually pre-order and I pre-order the special editions because I fucking love Assassin's Creed. But, you know, and I'm fine with that. Like, if they keep supporting this game, perfect. I don't, I don't mind. I mean, it, you know. Like, would I like a new Assassin's Creed game? Eventually, yes. But I mean, there's a lot to this game, and it's a lot they could, and there's a lot they can do with this game without uh, making a new one. Like, I enjoy Cassandra. I like her as a character, and uh, with a lot of the stuff that they're doing, like especially now that they've introduced, you know, Isu. Uh, <sighs> Fuck! What the hell's the word? These things, anyway, you know, they're not real. Oh, fuck, I can't remember what the name of them are now. But anyway, now they've introduced stuff like this, you know, like they can, and you know, the fact that Cassandra's lived up until present day, you know, it's like they can, you know, they can jump around time just with Cassandra. Now, would that get boring? Yes, that would get old eventually. Um,. But like with the size of the DLC in that, as long as they have stories and like ancient Greece is like the perfect fucking place to do that because ancient Greece 
is a thing that a lot of people know just enough about to enjoy the stuff, right? Like, they obviously already used a lot of it. Like, they used Medusa and Cyclops and all that quite a bit already for the main game. Uh, and, like, they could have had, like, a whole thing just on Medusa if they wanted. Like, like they could have had a whole DLC of Medusa as the final boss. Um, or, like, they could have had a whole thing. Like, instead of having to fight the guys as uh, Cassandra to get the things to seal Atlantis, they could have had an entire DLC where you were reliving the adventures of uh, of past heroes. You know, like... For something, I don't know. I mean, they're having, like, they have this whole thing here where it's Cassandra doing it to get control of the staff. I mean, it could have been something very similar to that. And uh, they can keep going for a while. Like I said, eventually it would get boring, but, you know, they could. And, uh, and like, the fact that Ubisoft is, like, I, like, I don't know if Ubisoft is coming out with something else. I, I don't know, like, besides Watch Dogs. Um, you know, the modern-day Assassin's Creed, kind of. But not really. Oh, don't fall down. You whore. Is that another body down there? Where the fuck did the other body down there come from? I only knocked... Yeah, well, whatever. Um. So yeah, like, I don't know if they're planning on releasing something else. This year? Next year? Whatever. This year, I guess. Um. I don't know. Does Legion come out this year? Or is that... I don't know. If it comes out this year, that might be why they decided no Assassin's Creed this year. Um, but either way, you know, like, uh, and they might be trying to mix it up again for Assassin's Creed. Like, Unity and Syndicate came out fairly close together, and then there was a little bit of a gap before Origins came out. And then Odyssey, very similar game, came out, you know, gameplay-wise, came out. You know, like, Origins was a big change from Unity and Syndicate. Unity and Syndicate were a big change from the other Assassin's Creed games. Uh, and Origins and Odyssey here are a change from Unity and Syndicate. I think I repeated myself in there at least once. Um, so, you know, it took them longer to do it. But, you know, they're two similar games. Both came out fairly close together. Uh, so now they're taking a break. So maybe they're coming up with something new for the next game, right? Which, you know, to be fair, I feel like they got the combat pretty well here. Uh... I do prefer it to the Unity and Syndicate. I'm not sure if I prefer it to the original Assassin's Creed. Like, I realize that the original Assassin's Creed was, like, super fucking easy, but... Oh, look at that. I got Rebellion equipment now. Alright, so, yeah. And, I mean... So, if the developers would just... Like, if they're gonna release a game every year... Make, and they want to put loot boxes in it to get more money. That's fine. I understand. But if you're going to, if you know for a fact that your next game in the same series, like sports games, they release a new game every year. More often than not, it's basically an updated roster. Every year I watch the same angry rant on the Angry Joe show about the new Madden game. Every year. It's the same rant. Oh, uh, look at this. Oh, there. this is a... It's like, this is a, a new feature that they're advertising, or this is a feature that advertises is new. I could do this like seven years ago. It's the same thing every year. It's fucking hilarious. No interest in Madden games. I still watch the rant every year. Um, but my point is like, those are games that they know they're releasing another one next year, but they put the microtransactions in it as if that game is going to be supported for longer than that period of time. Like, are they going to support Madden 20? I think is the new one. When Madden 21 comes out? No. Fuck no. They're going to say, fuck that shit. We're going to, we're like, you know, whatever. No, we're playing the new one. No, I don't want to go to Greece. I want to click on the, whatever. Go here. Um, but like the microtransactions that they put into the game don't, don't show that. And I know, like, a lot of people, like, they only need that one person, right? It's like, they need those whales. Like, that's why they do it. They need the people that have so much disposable income that they can just throw it into their fucking digital teams, right? Um, and, like, that's, you know, good for those people. I mean, throw some of that money my way. I don't have fucking hundreds and thousands of dollars to throw at a fucking digital game. 
uh, that I've already bought, purchased, like. Uh, but yeah, like if developers would make their loot mechanics, like their loot box mechanics in that, so that like, it doesn't, so that like, even if somebody did all the loot box stuff, it still didn't feel like they wasted their money when the next game comes out and they have to switch over. Like that would be the ideal because then people wouldn't complain about it as much. There wouldn't be as much controversy and you would be like, holy shit, these guys did loot boxes, right? What the fuck? These are now the best developers in the world because they put their loot boxes in to get their extra money from it, but they weren't assholes about it. That would be perfect. If anything, you would want your loot box mechanics to be in the game and as if you were supporting it for, I'd say eight months. So like if in eight months of gameplay, you could get all the stuff out of the loot boxes or you could buy it all and get it all in the first day. Yay. But if you did that, right? Like that's eight months that gives people time uh, for your game to drop in price a bit before they buy it and then they can go through it, you know, or, you know, because, uh, like, you know, for me, like, if it's a game that I really, really like, like Spyro Reignited, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I pre-ordered those. 100% pre-ordered them. But if it was another game like Far Cry 5, it's like, I want to play that game. I'm not willing to spend that amount of money on it, though, because while it is one of my favorite series, it's not, like, my favorite series, right? Like, currently, my favorite video game series would be Assassin's Creed. Next Assassin's Creed comes out, probably going to pre-order again. Probably going to do videos in it. Why? Because I fucking love Assassin's Creed. Uh, Watch Dogs Legion, when that comes out, am I going to pre-order it? No. Am I going to buy it day one? No. Am I going to buy it year one? Eh, maybe. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> but once again, you know, stuff like that. Um, so, you know, like for me, let's say I buy a game... If it's a game like Far Cry 5 or something, obviously it didn't work for Far Cry, or this isn't apply for Far Cry 5. But let's say it's a game series that it's one of my favorite series, but not my favorite series, right? Like, let's say it's in the top 10, but not in the top three. Like, the top three games would be ones where I pre-order them or I buy them on release or close to it. Anything under that, I will buy once the price has gone down some, like, there's the games that I'll pay the 80 bucks for, which is, like, my Odyssey, Spyro, stuff like that. Like, the new Doom when it comes out, probably, because I fucking love the last one. Uh, and then there's the games that I'll, I'll wait until they go down to, like, 40 bucks. That would be, like, my Far Cry 5s if they ever made a new Mad Max game. Uh, like, a, a Fallout or an Elder Scrolls game. Well, to be fair, Elder Scrolls, I might buy more. Uh, it depends on how good it looks when it comes out. Um, that, that, that one's right on the line. Or like a Hitman, right? Like, I'll buy that once it goes down in price. And then there's the games where, like, I'll spend 20 bucks on it if it comes with the season pass and all the DLC. That's, like, my uh, Agents of Mayhem game that I bought. Or, like, if I decide to buy a new Batman game or a new Army of Two game or something, right? Like, I'll spend 20 bucks on that. Or, like, my Prey game, I spent... I think 25 bucks on that or 20 bucks on that. It was the game and it's DLC. And then that's basically like my cutoff. And then there's like the games where I'll spend five bucks on. Those are mainly on Steam. They're mainly games where it's like, I'll buy that when it's $5 and then I never fucking play them. They're games where it's like, if I get bored, I'll play this, but uh, that I don't want to spend more than five bucks because there's a solid chance I won't actually play it. Um, and what they need to target is they need to stop targeting the people pre-ordering it. They need to stop targeting the people who will buy it day one or buy it within like the initial release period. They need to target the people who will buy it down the line and make them feel like they're not missing out by buying the old one over the new one. Like this was my problem with uh, Hitman 1 and Hitman 2. So like Hitman 1 came out if you didn't buy Hitman 1 at release, you started missing out on elusive targets. When Hitman 2 was announced, they put the elusive targets out again. Me, as somebody who didn't have the money to buy Hitman 1 when it first came out, or close to the initial release date, 
and wasn't willing to and then i did get it before they fully release the game but then i'm like you know what they're releasing all this i don't want to buy it until all the episodes are released because i don't want to play it episodically i want to buy the game play the game and just have it all right there in front of me uh and now that i've been playing the game i don't get to experience the elusive targets because i didn't have the 80 bucks to buy it at release and same with like hitman 2 I don't have the money to buy Hitman 2 at release, so I'm missing out on elusive targets. I don't even know. Maybe they've finished all their elusive targets. I don't know. I haven't been keeping up with Hitman 2 as much as I did with Hitman 1. And it's like, that makes me want to buy the game less. Like Hitman, I paid 20 bucks for it, for the Ultimate Edition, whatever it's called, came with all the shit. If I knew that, like, the elusive targets and that would be coming back, if I, like, because there's no reason why they couldn't have cycled them or something. If I, had, if I hadn't already known that I had already missed out on content that I will never get to experience, I would have been willing to spend more on it. Like, in, in all honesty, if the elusive targets had been cycled or had just been, like, continuously cycled, I probably would have paid it for 40 bucks when I saw it go on sale for 40 bucks. Uh, I saw it go on sale for 30 bucks. Definitely would have bought it then if I knew that I hadn't already missed out on content and that they were basically giving me the finger because I couldn't buy it at release. Because um, developers need to realize that the majority of their player base are going to be those people who buy it when it goes on sale. They're not going to buy it. Like, yes, their most loyal fans are the ones who are going to buy it. But those are the people who are going to buy it anyway. The people, and then there's games where it's like, I wanted, I wanted to play a game so bad. I can't remember what it is. It's like, I, but there was a game. I wanted to play it so bad, so bad, so bad. By the time I, it went on sale, by the time I could afford it for whatever reason, the next one had already come out. And at that point, I can't remember what game it was, but like they weren't, it wasn't like sequel. It wasn't like one and two. It was like, this game and this game they were similar but they were standalone and it was just like i no longer wanted to play the first one and buy that even though it was on sale for 20 bucks because i just wanted to go for the next one and wait for the next one to go on sale because it was just an improvement over the first one and it's like you don't want that as a developer even if somebody's only spending 20 bucks on your game instead of that initial 80 that's still 20 bucks down the line. That's still profit that you're making over time. But anyway, I could go on for this for a while, but that'll be it for this part. I need to get the next part of this stuff recorded. So thanks everybody for watching and I will see you Friday for the conclusion of uh, chapter one of Fate of Atlantis.